So hello everybody and my name is Felicity and I'm here at the Social and the Department of Social Sciences and Humanities at Loughborough University and my project is a joint studentship between Loughborough University and the University of Nottingham and it's funded by the Economic and Social Research Council and Loughborough University. And so I'm going to talk to you today about one part of my PhD project which is about managing identity and dementia interactionally. So I'm just going to give you a brief overview about what I'm going to talk about today. So as I've just said, I'm going to focus on one part of the PhD project, which is the interaction data set, which was collected by Professor Liz Peel in 2012 as part of the Dementia Talking Project. I'm going to give you a very, very brief overview of conversation analysis and how identity is viewed under a conversation analytic lens. Before giving you an example from the data set, and showing what this can tell us about dementia and identity. So as part of this part of the project, I'm aiming to answer this question. So how are issues of identity managed in communication with people living with dementia? So this data set features 46 and a half hours of video data across domestic and institutional settings. And I will use conversation analysis or CA to look at how identity is presented and maintained by people living with dementia and those around them. So very, very briefly, CA is an approach that aims to describe, analyze and understand talk. And it focuses on the action and interaction. So CA looks at the social actions that talk achieves. Uh, so this is done by how a speaker designs their talk. So their choice of words, their tone and their emphasis, for example. So I'll very briefly cover how identity is viewed under a conversation analytic lens. So identity is viewed as something which is constantly constructed and reconstructed through talk with others. So people with dementia may require support from conversation partners and they can help them maintain their identity through shared interactions. And interactions also have the power to categorize us and this can obviously impact the way we see ourselves and the way we are seen by others. So this shared way in which identity can be constructed and how identity can be negatively affected by the social environment fits well with a CA approach. So research in this area is really important as identity is a core part of people's psychosocial existence. And in people living with dementia, it's one of the things that's under threat. So by researching the way that people with dementia and their conversation partners maintain identity, we can hopefully um, find more um, supportive ways of, of um, supporting their identity. So I'll now give an example of interaction from the data set and this will work similarly to how Saul did it earlier. Um, so what I'll do is I'll show you the video. So that's on the right hand side of the slide there is a screenshot from the video and as you can see it's had a filter added. Uh, so this is to provide anonymity for the participants in the extract and also you'll see the subtitles on there and the subtitles have some technical elements so uh, square brackets will indicate overlapping talk so where two people are speaking at the same time uh, laughter is written out by how it sounds so <laughs> and then cap the capital letters indicate uh, louder talk so in this extract, um, it's from the own home setting. So June and Graham are a married couple and they are in the bedroom of their home and June is brushing her hair. And June was diagnosed with probable Alzheimer's disease in 2008. And as the data were collected in 2012, is currently four years post-diagnosis. So before I play you the first section of this clip, uh, which is split into three parts, um, you're going to see Graham ask June a question and I want you to think about uh, in the context of June having a dementia diagnosis, what does this question do? Um, so is it asking for information or is it a possible test of June's memory? So let's have a listen and hopefully the sound works. Uh, what do you do it? There you go there. So this type of question can be seen as a known answer question. So Graham probably already knows what June does at the day centre. 
So therefore, this question can be seen as a subtle or perhaps not so subtle test of June's memory. And we see this type of question a lot in parent-child interactions and also in teacher-child interactions, where the parent or child already knows what would be deemed the correct answer. So in this next part of the clip, I'd like you to think about how June could answer this question. Um, so she could be annoyed at being asked it. There could be embarrassment in not perhaps being able to quite remember what she does at the day center, or there could be something quite different indeed. So let's have a look. Well, you forget, I mean, you think I forget, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> So you can see that June does treat the question as a test of her memory, but not necessarily as an unwanted test. Uh, so there's no evidence of any anger or embarrassment or annoyance. And in fact, June brings the issue of not being able to remember to the table herself, which is quite an agentic thing to do. And then Graham replies to her with, yeah, and lots of laughter, which is then shared in overlap with June's laughter as well. And this displays quite like a lot of intimacy and also an affiliation between them through them having shared laughter. So in this final section, I'd like you to think about how what June says positions her uh, memory difficulties, not necessarily as a deficit, but more as a fact in her current identity. You might be right there. Yeah, it might be, yeah. <laughs> but the driver's always nice that takes you. <laughs> so we can see that June treats forgetting as a factual thing, and then Graham agrees with his yeah, might be, which echoes June's use of the word might um, as well, which shows further affiliation between them. And then in the final part, Graham starts a new topic. Um, so he gives an assessment of the driver who takes June to the day centre as being always nice. Um, so this could be a possible further test of June's memory to see, does she remember what the driver's like that takes her there? Um, but to know for sure, we'd have to watch on and we don't have time to do that suddenly. <laughs> so what does this talk say about identity and dementia? So it shows that identity is complex and interwoven in the interaction, and I'm at the very beginnings of understanding it. So we can see it in the interaction, but if other approaches are used, we may miss important aspects of identity that are present in the details of interaction. So in this clip in particular, identity is displayed through the relationship that Graham and June have. So through their talk, they do being in a relationship. And it's also displayed as something as uh, being something that's in the here and now. So while June may not remember what she does at the day center or remember things from like her past, she does remember Graham and their relationship in the present, which is something that I think is really beautiful about this clip. So thank you very much for listening. I've got my contact details on there if you do have questions and also some possible question prompts, which I don't think we have time for now, but you can post them in the, in the chat on the Zoom. So thank you very much.